Hi, this is Steve Graves from the Department of Geography at Cal State Northridge, and this is a video tutorial on using Thiessen polygons to do some analysis of business areas that you could use in business geography or economic geography. You want to know a little more about Thiessen polygons, uh, just Google it and you can go from there. They're really quite useful in a number of applications. So for this tutorial, um, what we have here on the screen are a number of home improvement centers that uh, I've pulled from a business analyst in ESRI or ArcMap and they're scattered around the San Fernando Valley. The background layer as you can see is the LA County census tracts including median household income uh, but right now it's just showing the number of persons per census tract um, across LA County. I'm not interested in uh, researching uh, Thiessen polygons or drawing Thiessen polygons for all of LA County. Um, I'm only interested in investigating the San Fernando Valley so I turned on that layer and um, I'm going to only ask the computer to consider this area as it begins to um, create these and polygons around each of the Home Depots and Lowe's. So to draw these and polygons, uh, activate the Arc Toolbox, select from Analysis Tools in the Proximity Toolkit, and select Generate these and Polygons double click to activate. The input features that uh, we want to create these and polygons around are the point features that are in the the home improvement layers. I want to set my output to uh, my Z drive. I want to save it in other words uh, here and I'm, I've already done it once so I'm just changing the name around a little bit. I've called it HD uh, Home Depot Thiessen 2015 San Fernando Valley is the processing extent. I click Save. Um, I generally like to click All to keep all the output fields from the Home Improvement Center. There's some data that is useful uh, there if you don't have any data in your uh, point layer then uh, then don't select all. I'm going to click on environments and the processing extent I'm going to set so I clicked on processing extent I want that to be the San Fernando Valley Zips BA layer because that was this layer here that I had uh, activated turned on to show you and then turned off and what it will do is essentially just uh, create a box around which um, the these and polygons won't go beyond. Click OK and click OK. Uh, you may down here see a notification that these and polygons tool is running. I'm going to minimize the Arc Toolbox window and wait a moment. OK. The these and polygons are created. A new layer was generated. And the first thing that we want to do is to right click, open the attribute table, and take a look at what was created. So um, it's given us the shape and the area. It's retained the name of the individual stores that are associated with each of the these and polygons and this is the data that I wanted to keep, the number of employees, uh, sales volumes, those sorts of things. It's not very good data, but um, you might have good data and want to use it. So this is an intermediate step. Uh, the next thing that we want to do really is to uh, join this Thiessen Polygon data with the data that lies beneath it. So we're curious, since this um, Thiessen Polygon for example, this one here represents essentially the trade area of the Home Depot that lies at uh, Roscoe Boulevard in Van Nuys. So everything, all the customers that live in these census tracts, for them, this is the nearest 
Home Depot. So we want to know just something about these customers, how many there are that lie inside that boundary. Maybe we can uh, make the boundary a little more colorful. And um, perhaps what their income is, so uh, the purchasing power that's within that area. Once again, I'm going to turn on the, the business analyst layer for the San Fernando Valley Zips, and you notice that this bounding box for our thesis and polygons in, in the red um, matches essentially the uh, extent of the San Fernando Valley zip codes, plus um, it went outside and grabbed some information about this a Home Depot um, that lies way over in the very uh, corner of the San Fernando Valley in, in Glendale. Okay, I'll well, turn this zips layer back off and the, the next step that we're going to do is to do a spatial join in which I want to um, grab the data that underlies uh, in, a, in a layer beneath the thesis and polygon layer and add it into the thesis and polygon layer. So how do we do that? I'm going to right click on the, our new thesis and polygon layer and I want to select join and from the join options we want to make sure that it is based on spatial location not a table join but a spatial location and I want to join the data from the LA County tracks including median household income and I want not only the average for a number of those variables but for some of them I want the sum as well so we want essentially the average of the household incomes and the sum of the total population I'm going to save this once again on my Z drive you save it on uh, the drive that you prefer and I'm going to call this um, uh, Home Depot Thiessen Join Tracks. 50. Click OK and give the software a moment to join the data. And a new layer uh, has appeared. I'm going to drag the store points above and let's just take a look at the attribute table as I scroll across there's my store data um, but eventually we begin getting into the data that was joined to this layer um, and so for example the sum of population in this thesis and polygon will include all of the data summed below it. So that's the total number of people that live inside that thesis and polygon. Um, further over, we're interested in uh, not so much the sum of the median household, but the, the average median household income in 1999. So for that area there, there's $62,000 is uh, the median household income. If you wanted to, we could uh, quickly um, map the quantities for either of those. So the or the sum of population, and we see that this area serves a very large uh, number of people, as do these two thesis and polygons. But far fewer people are being served by this small uh, polygon here and these on the western edge of the San Fernando Valley. So these look promising, these green ones, as places to invade their territory to set up a new store. Um, but we also want to know if they've got money in those, those areas. So we would come and take a look at the average median household income. Maybe I'll switch the color on that just a bit. And we see that in this area where there were few people there were still a lot of purchasing power a lot of money on average so the last thing that you're going to do is to well let's um, deselect all the thesis and polygons we will open the attribute table 
we will add a field, which is another column, and we'll call this perch power. And let's uh, make this a floating type. Click OK. And then if you go to the far right, you will notice that uh, purchasing power is a new column of data. In here, you want to right click, select field calculator, uh, click yes on the NAG window. And what we really want to do is to multiply our uh, sum of population in 2007, double click on that, and then multiply that by the average income. So what we have is uh, a metric that shows us if there's a lot of people and a lot of average income, then that's a good place to open up a store. Uh, we may find places with a lot of income but few people, or a lot of people and small income. What I'm going to do is put uh, parentheses around the formula and divide this by 10,000, which will uh, make the output in that column easier to read. Click OK, and records get calculated. And the last thing that we will do is to uh, change the value that we're mapping over to purchasing power and then maybe change that to um, green to blue just to make it easy to see and these areas in blue are areas that have a great deal of total purchasing power so these would be places that would be good to perhaps open another Home Depot uh, here or here uh, and the places that are in this green maybe we should change them to uh, a rose color. These are areas where uh, there's either too much competition, not enough money, or not enough people. Uh, if you are in some classes, uh, you will be asked to open the attribute table and answer a handful of questions in Moodle to ensure that you understand uh, what's going on and the processes that uh, you have been shown. This is the end of this video tutorial.